Where in fact did we get that information about the 007 items going under auction, Freddy? Cairo, in the diplomatic bag, somebody's got hold of the contents of Bond's apartment and they're selling them to the highest bidder. If there is to be a Bond charity auction, the price will be high. High? Astronomical? But there is another way to see rare Bond props. Eon are lending your old friends at Lock & Co a selection of hats and props for an exclusive exhibition. I presume we have a contact at Eon. Oh, yes, Meg Simmons, the Eon archivist. She'll give you all the details. You leave tonight. Welcome friends, welcome friends, welcome one and all. Blair Ballard, the Bon Vivant, very much at your service. I really do hope that you're all in fine form. Now, as you are no doubt aware, this is still the 60th anniversary of James Bond on screen. Yes, back in October 1962, Dr. No burst onto the screens and the Bond phenomena was born. Now, there have been loads of celebrations going on over the past year. We've been to lots of them. But today we're back again at Lock & Co. If you remember back in uh, May, if you haven't seen the video, I'll put a link up there for you. But back in May, we featured the launch of the E.ON endorsed James Bond collection here at Lock & Co. They have some really wonderful hats that emulate and pay homage to the hats worn by 007 over the years. Now we've been invited back because E.ON have been very generous in loaning some of the hats from the franchise for a little exhibition that we're going to have to check out right now and meet, hopefully, a few special guests. Come on, let's pop in and say hello. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Lock & Co. Uh, my name's Ben Dalrymple. I'm the managing director here. Um, and I would sincerely thank you for coming for this very, very special evening. Um, we're obviously joined uh, by Mariam, which is a great pleasure. Um, and I'd like to say thank you also to the people from E.ON. So, to Meg, uh, Sam, Sarah, um, you made this happen um, and I couldn't be more thrilled with it and I think as uh, when the ribbon is cut and you get an opportunity to see it, I think you'll be thrilled too. Um, Lock & Co is 346 years old. Um, I'm the new boy, I'm the six in the 346. Um, but over the many, many years that Lock & Co has hatted uh, men and women, We've had to people who are, are, are famously British. If you think of London as red buses and black taxis and Britain as sort of the Churchill dog, the, uh, the Union flag, um, you also think of Churchill. You think of Nelson, uh, very, very prominent Lock & Co customers. We've had it kings, princes, princesses, a queen, dukes and duchesses. Um, and we've worked with... Eon, we've worked with Bond for all 60 years. One of the very first scenes of James Bond in the gun barrel scene, wearing a Lock & Co hat, Sean Connery there. And it's always been a sort of an unofficial relationship, something that we've been extraordinarily proud of, but unofficial. So last year, when we spoke with Eon and we made that official, as the official hat to James Bond, for me, for the business, it's as important as hatting Nelson. It's as important as hatting Churchill. Because for many people, as much as Bond is entirely fictitious, he's really real in terms of Britishness. And you see that at the London Olympics. 
You know, one of the things that people remember is the moment that James Bond jumped from the helicopter. Um, and I think he is a sort of an ideal of what a British gentleman should look like. And with that comes, obviously, fine tailoring and great hats. So it is it's very, very important to us. We had five hats that we released this year. It's two more that we uh, released this evening on the opening of the room. We have the James Trilby, blocked on the original block, as worn by Sean Connery in the, in the same colour. Um, and we have the 60 cap, which is our sort of love uh, story to the Bond uh, franchise, um, which is a beautiful cap. Both hats made of escorial wool. Uh, the very, very finest wool that you can find that used to be reserved for the Spanish royal family is now an exclusive for Lock & Co for hats. Um, so those are launched today. You're seeing them for the first time. But as much as I'm sure you're desperately excited, and that's the real reason you're here, there are some other hats um, in this room as well. Some amazing props from the 60 years of Bond. Some things that I remember from my childhood, and I was just so excited to see them here. Um, so nicely presented. So more than enough from me. I'll hand over to Mariam, who's going to do the opening. Um, but thank you again, and thank you to Eon, and I hope you have a lovely evening. Cheers. 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 Well, hello, everyone. And I'm wearing a beautiful Lock & Co hat that was, I think, done for Sean Connery uh, in one of the earlier ones. I don't know if it was Dr. No, but... Uh, I love it. And it is today the 26th of November, no, 26th of October, 2022, and I am declaring the exhibition open. Yay! Well, I'm here with the always wonderful Meg Simmons. Oh, it's so good to see you again. Lovely we've seen to see you. We've seen each other so many times. We were at the Christie's auction, obviously, um, last last week, week before last, and then we, we, we were here actually, the first time we met was at Lock & Co for the launch of this collection we've got for the 6th anniversary. Tell us a bit about what's going on today, because you've, you've raided the archives, and you've dug up some amazing, I thought we were just getting hats, but we've actually got some props as well, but can we talk about, uh, you know, a few of the hats you've, you've dug up? It's amazing we've, what you found. So let's, where should we start? I mean, it's a bit of a kid in a candy store. I think Vesper's Trilby Lock & Co hat from Casino Royale, which was one of my favorite films. It's never been exhibited before, and I'd like to wear that. I it's think it's a very, very cool. I love the kind of slant. It's got a really nice kind of uh, rim to it. The actual the angle is yes, very, very cool. That was a Lindy Hemming costume designed uh, film. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I love it. It's only in the film for like a split second, but it's beautiful. And that's again, it's, that's what we always do. Is that even if it's something on film for a few seconds, it's special. I wonder if Lock Co would actually because they, is there there might be talk about doing a further a collection. Maybe that would be another one that they would really. Well, I would like them I'd, to do that. Yeah, yeah, I think it'd be really. It would fly off the shelves. Um, so let's talk to. That's obviously um, Silver's um, police hat. His disguise hat. From he's, Skyfall. Yes, in the London Underground when he's um, running away from Bond. He's broken think he, out of prison. Yeah, I think, you know, having the long blonde hair kind of sport, he's not really, I mean, because coppers normally have their really short hair. <laughs> <laughs> he looks far too flamboyant. But anyway, it's artistic license, so, you know. Um, and that, that, what's the phone? Uh, is that. That's when he says, I, that's when he triggers the oh. uh, explosion that oh, brings that wasn't, yeah, that the wasn't huge, for me. That was the, oh, the train. The huge train coming through the ceiling aimed at Bond. The, now, when I, when I talked to Chris Colbert, I neglect when we, the, the, um, the Christie's auction um, a couple of weeks ago. I forgot to mention when I spoke to Chris Corbold because when they were filming, they actually put Chris Corbold as the driver of, right. the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the tube train as it comes crashing through, which I thought was a really lovely little kind of a touch well, for him. and again, it's a, it's a, an example of how the producers get involved with some of the decisions and in the archive after filming that sequence we had uh, a million baby dolls returned from that scene and they were supposed to be kids that were on the train but it was decided by the producers we don't want to show well, macabre, I suppose. exactly and they say no we don't want that so they didn't ever use those but they still were returned to the Mountains archive so of them. Unused, not seen on screen baby dolls. 
Is there a lot of that though? Do you have a lot of kind of props yeah, that would never make, make the cut? That, yeah, that th changed at the last minute, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, we've got, this is Gettler's, um, and it's Lock and Co as well. It's oh. Lock and Co. And that's a great hat too. It I is. mean, I'd like to wear that hat as well, even though it's a man's hat. I think it's great looking. Is that something that was part of their collection when the when the filming was made? Or was I'm it some pretty bespoke? sure. I, I'm pretty sure. I can check with Lindy, but I think that was probably um, um, something they had plentiful amounts of. It's a, and it's, it's, a a, and it's an action scene because it's all the house falling down and all that jazz and him getting stabbed in the, you know, nail gunned into oh, the yes. eye. If you get a close-up of that, Jay, look, I mean, that's, that's the actual, the, oh, wow. Yeah, because Bond picks up this, it's like he always uses whatever is at hand. It's grabs you know, what's but, nearest, yeah. And it's a nail gun. Of course. <laughs> but exactly. If you're going to pop a, uh, a baddie, that's the one way to do it. It's that's, made me afraid of nail guns ever since I saw that scene. It's just, I, just, like, I mean, the good, it's a that. health and safety nightmare. It really <laughs> is. Now, moving back this way, we were obviously, um, you know, that's Cara Malovi's uh, um, nurse's hat. How wonderful! When they, they, you know, they got Jersey Bond off in the in the back of the in the back of the um, the, right. the, the, the the ambulance in Morocco. Um, that's amazing. So that's the actual one from the film. That's so cool. It is, and um, that's never been exhibited before. So that's a, a first. Yeah, that's. I remember reading somewhere that on the actual side of the um, the medical box, the kind of the cool box where, where they have got the frozen with the ice and the diamonds, as well as the animal's heart. On the top, it's got like in the translation is actually handle as if you're handling eggs. That's right. Which is what they also used in Thunderball for the nuclear weapon. And that's why, because Peter Lamont had a lot to do with that, and he did the research on the set dressing for the Vulcan bomber and Thunderball. So it's a phrase he knew that really is used in special situations. Wow. And so he reused it in Living Daylights. I love that kind of like the back background, the back, because you, you you're, you're so good at, I mean, when you have the props on set, they are, you know, you've got files that are, you know, you never actually look inside the files, but you've got loads of, you know, authentic paperwork and so on inside just to get the actors in the kind of the zone. Or Peter Lamont. Or Peter Lamont just being ably. Unfortunately, <laughs> he's no longer with us, but, you know, I had him to pick his brain for a long time and he had such a great memory for all the details. Oh, fab. Absolutely fab. Now, we've got a couple of naval commander's caps here. Which one's which? Where are they from? This is... This is Roger Moore's hat, which was obviously bought uh, from Bermans and Nathans, a famous costumer, mm -hmm. who was um, became Bermans in the end, mm -hmm. and then Angels, Angels yeah. bought it mm -hmm. out. And the top one is uh, Pierce Brosnan's. So they're very similar, even though they're 20 years apart. This sure. one is from 1977. That one from 1997. Wow! But so um, it's always good seeing seeing Bond in uniform. It's a shame we never got to see Daniel Craig, you know, wearing the full full naval gear. I think that's fans true. Really we would only have that. Connery, Roger, and Pierce that are in full naval uniform. Yeah. There is a piece that was done by a Navy newspaper mm -hmm. that analyzes their ribbons, oh, yeah? which is really interesting because mm -hmm. they're all different. Oh, okay. And yeah, and I don't know the costume designers you know, obviously had to make it up as they went along and make it current to the times. Sure, sure, sure. So it had to change from what yeah. Connery's ribbon said, what he was involved in. But all those little stripy ribbons, they mean things. Sure, sure. They're different. You, know, you served a tour of duty in Afghanistan or wherever. Exactly. So, um, oh, wow. so, it had so to be kind of like, they yeah. analyzed what all of them, where they'd been. Because there's also, the there was also, kind of there was a book that was made for Daniel Craig's kind of, his naval background. And he was supposed to have been for the SBS and he was not on the Ark Royal, which obviously was decommissioned or whatever, which is the, 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 um, What is this book? Maybe I'm it's not, not sure. one of our official books. I don't know. I thought it was semi-official that was kind of gave some of the actors a, a sort of background. But um, he was SBS as opposed to being from the Ark Royal and he was on a, um, a submarine. Anyway, this is another story. <laughs> If we move across here, we've got, <laughs> is this the actual one, the actual, the actual suit? That this is the actual suit that he wore. The only thing that isn't authentic to seen on screen is the mask, mm -hmm. because we felt it was a little bit vulnerable here. Sure. So um, we have our reproduction mask that was 
made with access to the real mask right. seen on screen. Sure, sure. So that's one of our merchandising pieces. Oh, right, okay. Uh, but it's, it, like I said, it's, it was, they had access to the actual real mask, so mm -hmm. it's a... It's very. It's as close as you can get to being the. Real is that a factory thing. entertainment, or is it a? It is factory. Oh yes, very yeah. good. But is this? I mean, the is it just the coat and the and the the is it a Jackson hat? The the. It is, but if you notice, his trousers don't really match. Right, is that, are those the, the actual film, trousers he wore though? Yes, they are. Oh wow, there we are. And um, these are Tom Ford, and of course he goes into the hotel room, uh, and then he he's wearing that lovely suit that I was wearing. Suit. Mm -hmm. And those are the trousers that match the suit. So in the film, he's actually wearing the blue trousers when he's doing because he does a quick change. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. Makes and sense. And we have loads of those because then he does. It's a real big action scene. Mm. He's like walking across the rooftops. And of course, he does that great fall. Yeah, and bounces on the sofa and then. Kind and of so like... we have lots of those trousers with padded <laughs> bottoms. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I was going to say, but Daniel Craig's not got a very padded bottom, so he needed the extra help, I suppose. <laughs> It was an action scene. It so was. You know, he, he needed. He needed uh, all the help he could get. Now this is again. Is this the actual? Um, the actual um, yeah, costume yeah, but, um, that Stephanie, Stephanie yeah was wearing. Wore, yeah. Oh wow! And the mask as well. That's beautiful. To get a close look at that, Jack. That's. A, I mean, so. Yes, Jay, and they um, again. They took a lot of detail with the this mask maker is a specialist in masks, and I think uh, if I remember correctly, Jani Tamim went to him because he had done like the masks for. Um, many, many famous masks, uh -huh. and she wanted one especially for Bond mm. because the eyes needed to be seen, his blue eyes, because that that right. would identify him as Daniel Craig. Sure, sure. And she wanted the jaw to be manipulated so it was a bit more animated. Uh huh. And not just it was on a there's a kind of there was a elastication I think wasn't there that you know. Yes. Yeah, this is there's this actually does does move. A, it's a jaw that moves. I remember seeing that when we went. They had the Spectre auction. Um, is it twenty sixteen? Um, at yes, Christie's and we again. auctioned one. Yeah, yes, that's, that's right. right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, another reason why I use the merchandise copy was because we only had one left. <gasps> Seriously, <laughs> we oh, auctioned wow. one and then we oh, have one left wow. in the archive. So I didn't want to take a chance of that. Crikey! But um, yeah, so it was very specially designed. It's not just a mask that you can buy anywhere. No, no. And, and all the masks with the fifteen hundred extras they had in that opening sequence were uh, handmade and individual. Wow, what a, a, a feat of, you know, of getting everybody and ready at the same time to go on and do the actual, do the oh, actual yeah, scene. Oh yeah, it was like a military Mil yeah. procedure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Moving on, what have we got here? So we've got some, where the swords? The swords, where are they from? Oh, that's the Gustav Blades. Graves. Blades! Blades Club, of die course. another day. They start off with the fencing foil. Yep. And then, of course, things get serious, <laughs> and they start breaking into antique display cabinets and grabbing weapons from them. So these are dummy weapons. They're not real, because uh, the real ones were too heavy sure. to exhibit. But, <laughs> but, but they start going through several different types of weapons in their big fight scene with amazing. Brosnan and, and uh, Toby Stevens, who was a great villain. Yeah, he's, uh, I met him, well, I didn't meet him, but I saw him, and my brother was in a play um, at the Hampstead Theatre, and then um, Toby Stevens came in, um, and he'd actually played the role that my brother was in, and so he was coming to see that, the, 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 new, the, new, the new production, and he's much bigger than I, in real life, and, you know, when I saw him in the film, I thought he was like, you know, sort of 5'10", or whatever, he seemed like he was 6'2", massive broad shoulders, and, you know, my gosh, I was like, crikey, he doesn't come across on film, uh, you know, as being that imposing, but... Incredible. Okay, moving on. Sorry, I'm you know yeah. digressing, but oh, this is great from uh, now. From we're going back to the '80s. By the way, all six decades of Bond are represented in this small little you know, must come guys. Yeah, exhibition. absolutely. Um, and this is uh, from Octopussy. Both of these. Oh, look, look! look. Oh, here we go. Oh, never wow. exhibited before. Bond's clown hat. Wow, that's and incredible. And he's disguised to defuse the nuclear warhead in the. See, Octopussy, I, it's one of my favourite Roger Moore films. It really is. I mean, some people think, oh, having Roger Moore and clan costume kind of detracts from... But then Never. you look at the scenes, especially now, Stephen Burkhoff as the mad Russian He's general. Top, it's very I'll topical. I'll be the hero of the Soviet 
Oh, yeah. Was, but, uh, I, I mean, Stephen Burkhoff is one of the all-time great um, uh, uh, thea you know, actors, thea uh, theatrical actors especially. But having this, I mean, just I didn't know that, that was you know going to be going to be here today. It's I mean, one of my favourite films from the Roger Moore era, as I say, and having it here is just absolutely epic. Well, this is why I chose it because it's like when you have a very little space in an exhibition, you tend to go for the most iconic costumes. And disguise costumes don't really sum up the character in one one look. Sure. And so that's why that's never been exhibited before. And I just thought, give it some, give it yeah. some its moment. Absolutely, it's to shine. Absolutely incredible. And then still with octopus, you obviously we have the pre-title sequence hats when Roger Moore has to kind of uh, come out of disguise. He's coming as a horse trainer and that's horse right. Trainer and and then... has to his reversible coat and his reversible hat that miraculously goes from this to that. <laughs> and stiffen size. And you can see here, this is like the this transition hat. Oh, wow. Oh, so. so you can see it's made of the same material as that one. And then it's like the in-between stage, all done in just a few seconds so that it ends up like that. Amazing, amazing. That's and you so know his, the guy who he was supposedly trying to pose as. El Toro, you know, sounds like a load of bullets. Was his stand-in. And that's why they looked so similar. Because he does look strange. And it was strange. very convincing that, that he could... Believe that it was actually, that was Roger, yeah. you know, that he was actually Roger Moore was in person. So I didn't know that. Yeah, that was his, Roger Moore's normal stand-in played that role. Neuro Toro too. Amazing. That, I did not know that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, okay, um, now we've got some behind glass. I hope the camera's going to be able to pick these up. But we've got some very, very special hats here. I mean, let, should we start down with Timothy Dalton's... Um, Lock and Co. hat again. Lock and Co., yeah. And this is from the opening sequence of License to Kill. Mm -hmm. And uh, when, of course, he gets, you know, in an active, on his way to Felix's wedding, mm -hmm. he has to um, apprehend, with Felix Leiter's help, the groom, yep. uh, Sanchez, and uh, gets a bullet hole in his hat. You can see the bullet hole in the back. Can you see that, Jay? Um, you can see the bullet hole there. That's amazing. That's a, that's a lock and co hat. What do we have down here? What's in the front here? Oh, the light, is that the light of the... That's the gift that Felix and Della give him is because he's like the best man and his carnation. We have other hats like that that aren't Lock and Co. They're sort of imitations and they have handles oh, yeah. on the side and those are for the stunt doubles that actually did the skydive. Oh, was it, who was doing it? B.J. Worth costume. or who was doing it? I don't know if it's B.J. Worth that time, but um, he, he normally does lots of the parachute jumps. But yeah, so to, and the, you know, so we the, have this, yeah, the stunt man's handled because they had to make sure they kept hold of it as they jumped, and, yeah. Um, and then Timothy's hat in the final scene when he's already landed. And so. then they walk in, and the amazing scene when they walk into the church. He with did the, a lot of action stuff, Timothy. He did a lot of the action. He always wanted to, but he uh, he didn't do the actual. Some of the actual oh, the parish, the parish mm -hmm. But is that the light that they use at the end of the film when he when they when they yes. he sets Sanchez up on fire? Wow. Yeah. Now moving on, this is obviously um, the flight, the pilot's hat um, cap from Thunderball. It's in amazing condition. I mean, it's amazing. It is, and it's an authentic vintage 1965 Vulcan pilot's cap. That's what they wore. Wow. With its, um, this is sort of starting to deteriorate because plastic doesn't um, hold up that well. It's sure, the over, rubber is over perishing. fifty years old now. Um, oh, back in nineteen sixty-five, it's. I think it's looking in amazing condition. You really do look up. So in the archive, I mean, is it all. I mean, is it how you how do you sort of protect the older pieces? Well, you try to keep them clean and away from water and away from sunlight, sure. dirt, sunlight, and water are your enemies, enemies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and. Um, and so that's what you try to minimise. It's an amazing job, that, because I mean, it does look sort of um, box fresh. Now, this is Q's computer, if memory serves. It is, which I love, because oh, it has stickers. so much personality, doesn't it? It really does. And the stickers, thing. I think we do actually sell these in now, the store, yeah. At one time, because they're designed by the art department, because of course we, we, you can't do anything that already exists, which sure. is copyright infringement. Mm -hmm. So the art department created all these little sister uh, stickers. For they thought they would, uh, you know, explain Q's personality, which it does. Yeah. And this again, it's so much detail goes into this. So the graphic designers on the Bond art department um, designed all these, and they were approved by the director, etc. And then you know you have the little broken corner. I know it's like a little bit damaged battle because he's you know 
he's cute and he's you know he's he's bumbling and kind of like he's you know I love that it's just like in one object you get a personality yeah absolutely it's like a little time capsule it tells you so much yeah absolutely and you see it in the film really prominently yeah exactly and I love how that you can buy the stickers as well and so that's Q's hat as well I believe is that in the background is that from Spectre the that is from Spectre and that is Ben Wishaw's hat when he goes looking for Bond in uh, you know in the mountains. In the Do, is that, is that, was that just off the shelf or did you have it specially made for him? No, or? that was off the shelf. But moving on, whoa, that's a Drax Enterprises space helmet from Moonraker. That's right, and you don't see too many of those because most of that was done in miniature, most of that scene. Sure, 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 with sure. With the helmets in the, in the space battle. Oh, the, but the we space battle have, scene. Yeah, oh, so, but right. we do have some full-size costumes and helmets from that scene. Well, the, one of the, the belt buckles from, uh, was up for grabs at, um, for oh, the auction. I love those belt buckles, and of course that was all designed by Jacques Fonteray, who did Barbarella. He was the costume oh, designer wow. of Barbarella. Jane Fonda, wow. Yeah. Crikey, sorry. Anyway, I digress. So space. <laughs> sure, sure. Now, we've got some amazing pieces from Goldfinger here. and That is the actual... One of the special effects hats. We have records that show that, that at least three were used for the different special effects scenes in the film. And then there was the Lock and Co hat, mm -hmm. which, which Harold Sakata wore. Which is slightly different because it is Lock and Co. The special effects hats, they didn't use expensive Lock and Co. Sure, hats for that. Sure. So these were like costume hats from Bermans and Nathans that represented pretty closely the Lock and Co. hat. But that's the one with the metal on the inside? That's right. And as best as I can figure, we don't have anything that really explains this well in the records. But because of the rigid brim, I'm assuming that's the one that was used at the very end, the final scene, when he throws it within Fort Knox and it sticks, sticks to the him. bars. Because they had to have something that would fix into the bars. Sure, sure, And of sure. course, actually, if a real hat, floppy brim wouldn't do that. That wouldn't do it, yeah, sure, sure. So I think that's what that was used for. And you never see in the film, you never see those blades. So that was just made to... Um, in the film, when it falls over after he hits it's the statue, on the, on the, bottom, it's on the inside, yeah, on the inside of the bottom, yeah, which right. was again a separate special effects hat. Right. So this is what they inserted these to give it that stiffness, so they could fix it between the bars in the sure. set. Sure, sure. And there's one of the actual gold bars. Is that the one? One of the ones that was used in the in the. It's the, the, the only Knox? one I know that survived that was actually used in the gold scene, the Fort Knox interior scene. And I got that. That says to Gwyn from Sean Connery. Gwyn was the daughter of the set decorator for Goldfinger. And so the, she got Sean Connery to sign this to her daughter. Wow. And um, many, many, many years later, Gwyn thankfully offered it back to the archive. So that's and the it's only the only one. one I know. Because they didn't have that many um, individual heavy, that's very heavy, gold bars actually on the set, even though the room was a cathedral of gold, they had to fake it. And Ken Adam told me this himself, sure. uh -huh. that they would just do end pieces that were um, 3D that looked like a stack of gold. But they were just... Ah, but they weren't individual. And then they would have, they had a couple of hundred made to make it look like they were real individual bricks. Wow. And then after filming again, this was only the third Bond film, even though it was pretty close to Bond fever at that time in 1964. Sure. Um, they'd just get rid of everything afterwards. Yeah, you mentioned that before, we spoke before, that they would just liquidate assets, they would, you know, or, you know, they sometimes be reused for other films, but largely, I mean, and also Sean Connery, who was a bit kind of light fingered sometimes and might walk off with a few bits and pieces, but. But basically, you did, that's why there are so few pieces from the, the sort of the, the Connery era, um, on, you know, because they just liquidated the assets like most studios did. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Now, those and golf the, shoes as well, that, were they the ones he wore? On, they are. Oh, those are wow. Lily Whites, Gert Frobes. Oh, they're, gold they're, shoes. Oh, they're, they're, they're Goldfinger's they're, gold, um, gold shoes, of course. Those are Goldfinger's gold shoes because he was dressed to play. Sure, sure. And then another piece that we've never exhibited before is Monica Bellucci's um, funeral hat. Wow. There, along with her gloves and bag and her husband's portrait and oh, wow, service, wow. funeral service. 
for the security. Yeah, they do all that detail. It's amazing the amount of yeah, exactly the forensic detail and you go. And most of it's not seen on screen, but you know, you guys, you make it helps the actors They're as well. It. They're holding all that stuff. If you watch it carefully, you'll see it. But it helps the actor as well to get really into the into the role. Absolutely. Well, I have to really say a massive thank you again. It's always a pleasure, Meg. Thanks so much for taking. I mean, it's been a while. I mean, we've been chatting for ages, and you know, everyone's kind of like walking off, getting ready to go. But <laughs> thanks so much again. It's always a pleasure. My pleasure. Great I'm stuff. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Oh, it's absolutely. You must come down and see it. Come down to Lock and Go. If you're in town. You must come down. How long is the exhibition on for? I think it's on through so the rest to of the year or Christmas. Oh, to Christmas, so yeah, yeah. I think. And um, but we're talking about you know maybe changing things up. Oh, you know, I don't know if you're on the, but, but this is well settled in with this first. You must come down if you're in the area, St James's. You must come to Lock and Co and check out because it's these are these are things you never will see again. They're you know especially some pieces have never been seen. I mean the octopusy pieces especially never been exhibited so if you're in the area in St James's come into Lock and Co and pay your respects. Well I hope you enjoyed that exclusive walk around the Eon collection down at Lock and Co with the ever wonderful Meg Simmons she's such a warm and engaging personality to chat to. If you haven't made the trip the pilgrimage down to Lock and Co in St James's do make the trip it really is worthwhile not just for the exhibition but to check out the 60th anniversary collection they've got going for this year. The new James, the Trilby that was modelled on the same block uh, that Sean Connery's Trilby was for Dr No is definitely worth adding to your collection as well. I'll put links to our launch collection video um, up here for you to check out as well. It's definitely worth looking at. But for now, this has been Blair Ballard for the Bon Vivant, bidding you a very Bond. Farewell. Stay safe, friends. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, please do consider smashing those like and subscribe buttons. Do turn on notifications so you know when the next video drops. Also, leave some comments down below as to any videos you'd like to see in the future. But for now, stay safe, friends. We'll see you next time.